this is Davey from Stumble or Pinball here demonstrating a new board that I've been working on. It's called Pinpoint. My camera's reversed, but you get the idea. So what is it? Well, I'm calling it a Mod Makers Development Kit. So it enables mod makers of all experiences to monitor game events and to then trigger specific actions based on those events. So what is an event? Uh, in the case of this board, an event is a sound. Um, so the board itself sits on the sound bus on a WPC machine using uh, these ribbon cable connectors here. Uh, and when a particular sound occurs, um, it can trigger uh, one of these three onboard LED ports, um, or it can turn on a toy at the bottom here, a five volt or a 12 volt toy, to turn one on or off. Um, and additionally, it will also send the, the sound information out this serial port here, which is an I2C serial port. Um, so let's jump straight in. I'll give you a demonstration of what it can do. I'm just going to install it on my, first of all, I've got this LED strip. I'm going to plug that into one of the LED strip ports. And I'll um, install it on my creature from the Black Lagoon. I've already got these ribbon cables automatically set up here. I'm powering the board using a 12 volt connector, which I've also already set up. I'll just turn it on. As you can see, the board itself fires up, but nothing yet coming out of that LED strip. And that's because we haven't set up any of the configuration to monitor any game events yet. So all of my boards, uh, including this one, are all Wi-Fi capable, uh, which means all the configuration is done uh, remotely over Wi-Fi. Um, so there's no actual connection between the Mac that I'm using here and the board. I uh, just wait for the uh, wait for the pinpoint access point to be created, which is there, and then go to a specific QR uh, for your IP address uh, where the board is, and up comes the web UI. There it is there. Um, so uh, there's various sections here that we can uh, go into, one that manages the events and the watches of those events, uh, the patterns that get, can get played. Um, the patterns are the same uh, types that are available uh, in some of my other mods like lollipops, uh, and each pattern can be configured to uh, control various aspects of that LED pattern, whether it be the curve of the LEDs or the colours and the mix of colours uh, and how quickly they spin and, and what kind of um, algorithm, algorithms are used to control that spin. Um, and there's, uh, you know, we can set uh, a bunch of those patterns up, um, but the, the key area of pinpoint is this event section here. Uh, to the left, there's a column which shows uh, the live events that are originating from the pinball machine. Um, and on the right, we can set up watches for those events. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the service menu of Creech. And of course, I need to delete some stuff. Let's just clear that. Um, so now if I click on the up arrow and the down arrow, you can see that sound events are getting triggered. 81 and 80. 81 is the up arrow, 80 is the down arrow. Uh, to the right of each sound, you can see that uh, there's a little uh, 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 label that um, shows how many events were triggered based on that sound, and there's zero events being triggered at the moment. So let's set one up for the up arrow. What was the up arrow again? 81. So we'll set one up for the up arrow. We'll say uh, port uh, LED1, which is where I plugged in the strip should play pattern one for three seconds in these colors. Um, now, if I click on the up arrow, you can see that that pattern now gets played at that strip. You can see the strip goes back to being blank after that, um, after that sound is triggered. Um, so let's set up an additional watcher um, for sound event zero, which is just the sound event when nothing's happening. And as you can see, the strip has started pulsing uh, with the at rest pattern um, of that pattern by selecting 
the different colors here in orange or in yellow or in neon green or whatever we choose. Um, also, you can see that um, when we've set up a watcher for a particular sound event, um, that label um, shows how many events uh, were triggered. So if there was multiple events uh, associated with a particular sound that did different things out um, the different ports, uh, it would show you um, how many had been triggered there, which gives you just a good uh, bit of feedback um, as to uh, whether your watches are, are triggering or not. Um, additionally, the, uh, the tab at the top here will turn red, showing you which of your watches are being triggered at what particular time. Yeah. Like that. Um, so let's set up another one for the down arrow. Uh, so that was uh, 80. And uh, again, we'll set it up for LED 1. Uh, we'll trigger a different pattern uh, in a different set of colors. Three seconds. And then now, when I press the down arrow, a different pattern gets played. Obviously, setting it up for service menu buttons isn't what we're actually going to be uh, want to, wanting to be doing. Um, as a mod maker, uh, this is just a demonstration. But um, because sounds are associated with all uh, you know major events in a pinball machine, whether it be a uh, multi ball or hitting a scoop shot or uh, hitting slings or any of the events that occur during a game, we can associate different patterns and different events and different watches for all of those uh, uh, all of those events in the game and set up some real uh, you know varied. Uh, um, you know, uh, mods and effects uh, for all of the uh, different things that are occurring in a pinball game. Uh, additionally, there's uh, some extended options um, uh, that are available, uh, including this thing called uh, Lua. Uh, Lua is a scripting language that interacts really nicely with C++, and that allows us to have sort of a more granular control over um, things that are occurring uh, when uh, an event uh, plays, such as we can record that event down in some uh, in variables uh, so that we can um, uh, get some kind of history as to what events are being played uh, so that we can check those. Uh, so we can say, you know, if the sling was hit and then the scoop was hit afterwards, then do a certain uh, action based on that. Um, so I'll give you an example um, uh, of some uh, Lewis script, which I've recorded down here. This is a very simple one, just to do some debugging to the screen. Um, so the print function will uh, print some debugging to the screen. It's going to print that text and then show us uh, the sound event that has just occurred. So I'll save that, um, go back into the event section here. And now when I click on uh, the event, you can see that that debugging has come through there. Um, obviously that's not a very usable example, but um, additionally we can uh, do some more complex stuff like this. Um, and what this uh, bit of uh, Lua code does is uh, records down um, the, uh, it records a variable um, uh, that it increments every time an event gets played. Um, and then when that uh, variable reaches a certain um, index, uh, whether it's two or four or six, then different um, patterns get played. Um, and then uh, it then resets that variable at the end. So now, um, if I, uh, I'll just delete these events so that they're not going to conflict. Um, now when I click on up, it would might help if we save that code first. Let's try it again. So that's one, two plays an event, three, Four plays in a, plays an event. Five, six plays an event. I was working on this stuff today. It's all brand new. Uh, it's all very exciting. I'm going to be producing uh, a, a, a mod with this to uh, get the uh, uh, Medieval Madness topper that's made for the remake uh, compatible with existing Medieval Madness games. Um, but the possibilities are endless, really, and it's a really exciting development, and I hope...